for or joined one of our webinars or worked with me through an enterprise team. My name's Alden. I'm Abstract's lead design advocate. Um, I can pretty much do a lot of consulting around either systems, process, workflow, uh, typically with Abstract at the core of it. I've been in the tool space specifically for about like a little over three years now. Uh, previously, with a company called Wake. And at the time we got acquired by Envision, I came over to Abstract and it's been probably the best thing I've ever done. So feel free to reach out, hit me up on Twitter if you have questions after this, or if you ever want to chat about process, things that are confusing, things that are making sense, product feedback, let us know. Um, Abstract is about like 120 people now, which is pretty crazy. So we have a lot of real humans doing uh, real work that you can talk to either through support or through folks like myself as advocates. We also have Andrea Burton, um, new ad design advocates, Sean and Scott, who are just onboarding as well. So we got a little team going. Uh, if you do have questions during this, there is a little Q&A button down at the bottom of your Zoom uh, window. So feel free to drop questions into there as well as I go through things. Um, and I'll make sure to touch on the ones that people already drop into the chat as well. So throughout this webinar, I'm kind of taking the approach that there are some folks here that might not necessarily be using abstract um in their day-to-day -day workflow might not be designers since this is design and developer handoff so i am going to be talking about things a little bit from um what to expect as a developer from that perspective uh, or somebody collaborating with designers even so the basic workflow here for designer we apply a git based workflow to managing visual files um, so really what that means is after i turn off my notifications and stop getting alerts directly into my head for my AirPods. Cool. So what that means is we affect change to sketch files, um, similar to how a developer engineer would affect change to um, code or any other type of file in something like GitHub. We create a branch for master, commit our changes. Um, we can create and share that work out either directly through links or through a collection. We can get our branches reviewed. Uh, just like a pull request for design, pretty much. And then we can export those assets, inspect the work, uh, merge it all back to master whenever we uh, deem is appropriate. Um, so basic high-level overview there. From our perspective, the main things that we are kind of focusing on this year um, as a product are additional file formats. So we'll be releasing support for XD, uh, Adobe XD later this year which is gonna be really cool. Maybe we'll do some sweet things and see you over at Adobe Max, possibly. Um, but also um, other things around more collaborative and interactive aspects of designs like uh, sketch prototypes or collections, for example. So our general approach here is to be file type agnostic. Um, over the last like two or three years, I've seen a lot of tools more closely vertically integrate and um, really lock designers into a specific drawing tool or prototyping tool more so. Uh, our approach is to be a, you know, central hub for your design team, what they're working on regardless of the file format um, with the core value of Git-based version control and true version control at the center of all that. So um, how do we do that? Just really quickly, two main platforms. There's a Mac application which I'm presenting from today. There's also a web application. So general best practice here, designers are using the Mac app. That's where we actually edit sketch files. Anybody else should be using the web app. Um, I'll pop over to the web app really quickly, but as you can see, it's pretty much full feature parity. Only thing we don't do from the web is actually edit sketch files. We can go into projects. We can view the contents of a sketch file without needing a sketch license at all. Um, go into different layers, leave comments, annotations, uh, compare different versions side by side, as well as access inspect, um, download assets all from the web. We'll be going through a lot of that today, but main thing to get across, if I'm not a designer, I don't need to use the Mac app. I can use the browser of my choice. The only time I ever need to use the Mac app is if I need to actually access a file. Um, or effect change to a file. So for the folks on this call, if you're on the development side of things or the collaborative side of things to a designer um, and this side of the workflow, um, just use the web app. It's gonna be the easiest and lightest experience that we could have there. 
Um, for anybody else who's actually affecting change to files, the Mac app is where we're going to work out of. Um, I talk about a Git-based workflow quite a bit. What this means just from a high level is we are not digging around Box or Dropbox or a syncing service for AS sign-in updates v4 final.sketch within a nested folder structure of like underscore account settings underscore final and then uh, a real lack of clarity and source of truth regardless of whatever drawing tool you use whether it's sketch or otherwise this is a very uh, annoying thing to deal with um, so our approach is to apply some of the solutions that developers and engineers have been taking advantage of for quite a while now um, to managing visual files it took us a long time to build out and then we came out of beta about a year ago um, I think now and released fully. So I'm going to share with you today. And if you haven't tried an abstract, free trial, abstract.com. Um, but when I talk about a Git-based workflow, there are some things that are different than traditional Git or we don't add a master directly. We don't need to check out branches. We don't need to access the command line or know any sort of code at all. Um, and we make it very easy for designers to take advantage of this flow. But from a high level, we branch from master commit our changes and merge those changes back to the same file that they started in. After, of course, getting them approved um, and handing off any of the specs that we need. So basic kind of agenda for this session. I'm going to go through uh, what it's like to view and interact with the work with an abstract. Uh, I'll talk about the layer detail view there. I'll go into how we collect feedback, how we share out things like collections and public share links possibly uh, if we do have that feature enabled for us. Um, I'll go into review requests and how to involve engineers and developers, even PMs, as folks that are approving the work and the branch to be able to notify them, how we manage those things, uh, when we are added to them, etc. And then I'll go into inspect assets and then after this secret kind of agenda item but talking about the SDK a little bit where we have API and CLI access to our application and people are building some really cool things there. So uh, within abstract, anytime we toss a file into it, um, we can view and compare changes that are made to those layers and comment and annotate on the work. Um, there's three different kind of main tabs to one of these layer detail views and this will be a little bit inceptive, but if I go into one of these layers just by clicking on it from the collection, comment, compare and inspect. Um, comment on the left hand side is going to have my entire commit history for this artboard. So any changes that I've made to it, any previous versions, I can go ahead and scroll through here. The details panel is going to let me know what collections this is a part of, what page, what file, what commit, what branch, when it was last affected, things like that. On the right hand side, I have the ability to make annotations, app mention people, uh, use markdown to embed images, links, whatever we need to do. Um, and then we can also toggle annotations on and off, do things like collapse the sidebars, change our view states, et cetera. We can go through this toggle down here and get into up to 400%. So um, compare is going to take the current layer we're looking at and then compare it to that layer at the previous commit or whatever the previous version was. Um, in this example, I don't have a previous version of this layer. I made it from scratch. Um, and this item doesn't exist at this commit. I could also overlay those two. Um, if I'd like to better understand, like, you know, mock to mock where the differences are, um, it's just a basic diff of two of the previews. Uh, but it's really nice to point out small, subtle changes like movement or copy if we just can't visually distinguish. And in inspect, I'm just going to make this 100% cool. So if I am in the inspect tab, uh, I can do a couple different things. On the left-hand side, I have the entire layer structure of whatever has been built in Sketch pulled directly where you're accessing the file. Still have that details panel down here that can also be collapsed if I want to get it out of the way. On the right-hand side, things like basic CSS, text strings are click to copy, um, our properties, our styles, and anything that we've made exportable within abstract, we can download as an asset. So the layer detail view, um, whenever we're viewing any of the contents of a file, just for example, I'll go to the master branch in this project, go to one of my files, and to access the layer detail for design and developer handoff, 
I would just click into any of these. Um, I can cycle through all of the artboards in this file if I'd like, or I can just, you know, send somebody a link directly to this file. So before I get too far ahead of myself, um, I'm just going to bounce back over here and talk a little bit about these sections. So comments are tied to the artboard at a specific commit. Um, each time a designer commits, we're building up a history of changes to that artboard. Uh, every time we leave a comment, we preserve that feedback across the history of those changes. Um, so comments and annotations really stay with the artboard for its lifetime. I think that's super impactful and really important uh, aspect of this. Maybe I can find a bit of a live example in one of our active branches, maybe something that Sarah is working on with filtering collections and things like that. So as you can see, Sarah's made a couple different commits here, filter options, adding the clear state, doing some cleanup and small tweaks, and then uh, testing out layer removed. Feedback that's been left is still on the right-hand side. It's tied to that artboard when it previously existed, annotations, things like that. So a lot of feedback happening. Um, and I don't lose that feedback historically. As somebody else who's going to pick up off of this or collaborate with Sarah, really important to have that preserved and accessible quickly um, throughout the history of the conversation. It's essentially like institutional knowledge that unless I reach out to Ben and Sarah and ask them what they were talking about two months ago, I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, it's a really powerful aspect of version control when we tie it to how we leave feedback with an abstract. Again, compare, pretty basic, but current and previous versions of two artboards, the ability to overlay them, uh, and just point out visual changes. If the comparison is just blank and it's white, there are none. And it might just be you know, a change to a non-visual something like a layer style was renamed. And even that you know, we'll kind of highlight in Inspect as well. Inspect, we can do a ton. We can download assets now. We can customize our unit preferences. If we need RGB, ARGB, something platform specific, uh, we can go ahead and toggle those in the bottom right. We'll talk about it later. But essentially, like big difference between what we're doing in Abstract and something like Envision and Zeppelin um, or other tools for Inspect, pretty much. If the file is an Abstract, we can inspect it. As a designer, I don't need to do anything to make this available. Um, other thing is that this is accessible to not just contributors in Abstract, which are paid seats, but also viewers. So viewers in Abstract are free. We don't charge for them. We don't cap them. Um, we don't believe in hindering the ability of people benefiting from the value of design uh, to access that work. So what we do with an Abstract is allow viewers to inspect, download assets, download files, leave comments and annotations, approve. Uh, branches through a review request, um, share out links, whatever they really need to do aside from edit the file. Um, instead of using the you know classic like Sketch Zeppelin Envision combination, that's three different licenses that somebody is paying for just to have access to the file, which in my personal opinion uh, isn't that cool. <laughs> so pretty much we're opening up Inspect to the rest of the org without creating a paywall for it. Um, it's also one small piece of abstract that goes along a much larger product based around true version control and a Git-based workflow. So inspect with an abstract compared to other inspect versions as well. Um, I haven't personally tried out, I know we talked about this, um, Ashish brought it up in the chat at the beginning for differences between Envision and Inspect, but I haven't played around with it in a while from the people that I've worked with that are using abstract inspect and dropping Envision and Zeppelin. Uh, it's a bit more accurate. So that's really nice feedback to hear. Um, if you are using Envision Inspect and you're more familiar with it than myself, I would encourage you just to toss a file into Abstract on a trial, inspect some of the artboards, and fill it out for yourself. Um, as far as where we're headed with it, right now we're displaying color profiles and we can't customize um, styles with an abstract. So something is going to appear as FFFFFF, and it's not going to say the abstract color it's going to give me the hex value or the ARGB value. So that is something that we are actively working on and should have rolling out pretty soon. But I'd say that's like the one main difference that is a bit of a nice to have, but at the same time, when I'm saving 
500 bucks, uh, not that big of a deal <laughs> in terms of the bigger scheme of things, um, but something we are building out anyway. All right, so the layer detail view, pretty straightforward. Um, three different views whenever we get sent a link directly to an artboard or a layer. If we're looking to collect feedback, there's a lot of different ways we can share our work to developers and engineers in abstract. Um, we can create what's called a collection. A collection is just a curated set of screens from the sketch file. So somebody actually just asked about a Jira integration in the future. It will probably be through the scope of collections. Um, so this is a collection, for example. I have artboards that are pulled in from a sketch file. Um, if I go to add, these are the files I have in this project. If I need to you know, add a new artboard that's pulling from this file here, I would just select it and click add. Um, this collection can automatically update. So as a designer, I don't need to um, continuously push PNGs or rebuild PowerPoint or Keynote decks just to share my workout or upload something else to Envision every single time I make a change. Um, this collection automatically updates every time we commit our work back to abstract and edit the file. So really easy for me to just create a collection on my branch as a way to focus people in. I can share this collection out um, to anybody else that has an abstract account. And if I have public share links, I can also share it to people, allow them to access previous versions and inspect without needing to log into anything or create an abstract account. So we'll talk about that later, but at the high level, collections are really a curated set of screens that from the file that we can just send out and link to people. They can automatically update and always represent what the latest work is, or we can toggle that off and capture a snapshot in time for a release or something that we're shipping. Um, so collections are super powerful. We use them quite a bit. Uh, and every branch, in my personal opinion, should have a collection. So if we go back to Sarah's, Sarah's example here, not only has she provided a phenomenal and detailed branch summary, kudos to Sarah, uh, but she's linked to a Jira ticket, some insights, as well as created two collections. One is explorations on the filter bar that we're trying to actually getting towards, and then we're doing some explorations on enhancing the search functionality of collections, which is why there's a little palm tree in the name. So these collections allow me to come to this branch and go straight to the overview and explore exactly what I need to see. Nothing more, nothing less. These are the screens I need to be paying attention to. I don't need to dig around in the files. I didn't need to go through Sarah's commits for the last 20 days. I don't need to go through what's been updated and what's been changed, even though that all that stuff is very well documented and contained. Um, a collection allows me to focus in to what's important. Um, so definitely recommend instead of sending somebody a link to a bunch of different artboards or, or multiple links to different artboards or sending somebody a link to the file or just, you know, even just like a link, link to the branch. If there's not a collection here, it's not super clear what we should be looking at. So this branch overview is only as valuable as a designer makes it. If you're unclear about what you should be looking at in abstract when somebody sends you something, there's a good chance that we could provide more context in the summary or create a collection to drive focus. All right, I'm winded. I'm gonna have a little bit of coffee. Um, that was a long rant there on collections because I really like this feature. Cool, so in this collection here that I've got, I can go ahead and present this work. I can cycle through it in a linear flow and I can make comments and annotations directly on the work from here. These comments and annotations also populate that layer detail view that we saw earlier. Same thing, app mentions, things like that. Um, markdown, day mode, night mode, can go into a full screen here, um, collapse that sidebar. We can also access inspect directly through a collection. So if I get a link of four artboards, I can present them, leave my feedback, and then when needed, go directly to inspect to either, you know, download certain assets that I need or grab measurements and textiles or some basic styling code. Cool. So um, we, I did kind of just like mention this a second ago, but public share links are a feature within abstract that are very powerful. Um, not every team has them enabled. If you do have public share links enabled and you are using them, 
there's some really unique and cool things that we can do with those links because they are public, um, like tossing them into an iframe and creating a rich embed, which I'll show you in a second. But whenever I want to share anything out in abstract, chances are there's a link to it. Um, from a collection, let's do that big blue share button. For anything else, you know, I can go to my files tab, for example. If I need to share a file, I can just copy a link to it. If I need to share a specific artboard, I can go to the share view. If I need to send somebody to a project, et cetera. Um, we can link to just about anything within abstract. Um, and people can access it on the web. So if I copy a link to a project and I go over to the web app, da -da -da -da, I'm going to be sent a link to the Mac app project. And now I'm here. So also day mode, night mode, just to, uh, respect your preferences, but whichever you prefer on the Mac or web. So most things we can link to, if we ever need to share something out with an abstract, if we are not using a public link, those folks need to be at least viewers, which means we can send them a link. They can use their name and email for the company to sign up um, and join the organization. If we want to circumvent that, we can choose to enable public share links as an administrator of the account. If we allow public links, we can share those things out without needing people to log into abstract. Um, we can also do a couple other cool things with those public links. So just to talk about them really quickly before showing them off, when we have public links enabled, we can control uh, some of the sharing settings for what we are sending out, whether it's a collection or an individual layer. Um, we can allow people to see all versions or just what we're sharing. And we can allow people to use inspect or just see the work that we're sharing. Um, within you know, the public share links feature, this came out in abstract 79. We need admins to turn it on. And when we uh, do use something like a public share link, we can consistently you know, embed it into a JIRA ticket or something like that, where we have a link to a set of screens on master that are always reflective of the latest, or we can send a link to a collection. It's a snapshot in time. Anybody can access it without even needing to log in. We wouldn't need to pay for it anyway because we're abstract, but um, if I send a public share link to this collection and I say anyone with the link and I just want folks to be able to see inspect, I can copy a link to this collection. I can drop it in the chat and folks can access it and present it. And just to show you what that looks like, can go ahead and access an incognito window here. And this is what you should be receiving. Um, I'm not logged in. Alden created this, last updated this uh, deck 32 minutes ago before the webinar for a couple of quick things. But I can go ahead and present this work, cycle through it. If I need to, I can just go ahead and inspect it as well um, and access any of the properties. So I can pretty much access inspect just by sending a link to it without needing to charge anybody, which is really cool. Um, if I want to leave a comment, what I need to do is just create an account. Um, leaving, it doesn't mean we're joining the org, but if we want to leave feedback, we have to tie it to something. Um, and pretty much that means that you will have a personal abstract org that you don't get charged for, and it's just there, whether or not you choose to use it, but that'll allow you to use feed, leave feedback on the work directly for free. If anything, we can download assets and actually access inspect um, and do the things we need to do without actually having to sign in or create an account at all, which is pretty cool. So I wanna download that, boom, oh, easy, easy, easy. Um, so we try and make it as light and frictionless to share as possible. So that would be another you know, difference to uh, envision for sure. And if we are using public share links through the abstract SDK, we can do some really cool stuff like embed layers and pretty soon embed collections um, into an iframe as something that people can continuously reference as the latest. I'll just drop a link to this as well and drop it into the chat. Um, but if you want, you can access that layer, um, pop it open and actually leave some comments uh, or compare different versions or inspect it and download assets, for example, um, which is pretty cool. 
So public share links, that's one aspect of abstract. Um, it's definitely something to take advantage of and check out if we are collaborating with other folks, sending them work, we wanna create the lowest barrier to entry uh, possible. So it looks like we have a couple questions in the chat, which I'm at like a nice break point here. So I'll just take a second to, uh, to address really quickly before we go into the next section. Uh, Brian asks, one of the biggest complaints from devs is that loading on a browser is slow. There's something I can do in terms of organizing my sketch files to make performance better. Um, in terms of like preview generation and quickness, I think it, a lot of it, <laughs> if we're going through a browser, definitely depends on our connectivity speeds uh, and our network. As far as things that are on the web, it should be pretty dang quick. Um, I'll go into file, for example, on master, like things should be, you know, just about this snappy. Um, if we're experiencing any performance degradation, it might be a local thing because what we're previewing here and what we're displaying uh, on the web is even faster than the Mac app. So um, if they are having some weird slowness, definitely have them reach out. Uh, and we're happy to take a look and see like, if there's any reason that on our side, those files or previews are generating more slowly than others. Um, location can also impact this. Uh, maybe if they're in the complete other side of the world in India or something, it might be a little bit slower to access, but um, wouldn't be, you know, a huge margin of difference there. But solid question, Brian. Definitely like reach out to us and get those folks in contact with us. Warren asks, Currently, we're trying to share collections publicly and allow anyone to download assets, if needed, without sharing the entire view of our project files. Any plans to do that in the future? That's a really good question, Warren, and I'm not sure if I'm, I feel like that question probably came up before I went through the whole thing with public share links. Um, but exactly, we can take a collection and we can make it publicly accessible um, without sharing out the entire view of the project or the entirety of the file and send that link to folks to be able to download and inspect assets for free. Um, so public share links would be the feature we would use in that situation. Solid question. Pablo asks, can you share the link of this webinar collection? I did, it's in the chat. Um, it's right there and you can access it uh, and pull up this design and developer handoff deck if you'd like. Good question, Pablo. Uh, Steven asks, says this may be off topic, sharing designs and links to clients for review. Ones who may not need all the additional features such as inspect is where is a way to perform that need. Um, for folks who just want to share out work for the collection, um, we can disable inspect and disable all versions through public share link. And pretty much that's just gonna give us these screens and the ability to comment on them. Um, so I think that might just check the box for what you're looking for, Steven. Um, and same thing if we're looking at like an individual layer uh, of anything as well. If we just want to send somebody one screen, for example, and we go into one of our files on master or on a branch um, and I link this out, I can still use that public share links feature or even just copy a link specifically to an artboard. If we copy it to an artboard, they're going to have access to comment, compare and inspect. Um, but if we use a public share link and we say, you know, we don't want them to have access to inspect, then they're just looking at the ability to leave feedback and comment for free, which is also really nice. So hopefully that, I think that sounds like it checks the boxes for you, Stephen. Um, cool. Frederick asks, any plans of supporting hotspots created from sketch directly in collections? Maybe. I'm not going to get in trouble and uh, say more than I should, but good thought, Frederick. Appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna leave off with Anthony Hall's question in the Q&A section. Uh, so three more before I jump back into the deck and I'm gonna save some time at the end of this for questions as well. So Matt asks, when you merge a managed brass to master, do the collections go with it? So we'll talk about, actually, let me just double check. Um, collections, just to clarify, either live with a specific branch or on master. On the left-hand side of any project here, we also have this collections overview where we can filter by author. Um, all of these collections that are pulled up, some of them are you know, in, on master, some of them are on a branch that's active, some of them are in the branch archive and stuff that's been merged. 
This collections overview is every single collection in the project that we can filter through. Collections don't merge to master. They go into the branch archive with the branch when it's merged in, but they are accessible through the project level collections overview. So we can filter things for, I don't know what, I'm just gonna search the word Chrome and see what comes up. Different explorations, um, people messing around, trying to get some more canvas space, um, different build phases, some wallpapers with Chrome, some different Chromes that we could use. Um, but yeah, this is all the collections that are in the project through this collections view here. Um, so if we're looking to access these collections later after we merge, um, this would be the place to do it. But right now, collections don't merge to the master branch, if that makes sense. Um, collections can be created on master, or they can be created on an active branch. Yeah, thanks for the question, Matt. Appreciate it. All right, Michael Simonson asks, is there a way to tie commit messages that start with a JIRA ticket number automatically? Ooh, not right now, I don't think. I don't think you, that we could use the SDK for something like that. Uh, yet, tie commit messages that start with a JIRA ticket number. Um, I think what we would more so want to do is tie the branch to the JIRA ticket as opposed to a commit message. Um, that's typically how most teams are using it. So for us in the branch summary on a lot of these branches, we're adding just links to the JIRA ticket. Um, when we create the branch, we add that link in, um, possible room for integration right there. But as far as the commit messages, all of these commits are pretty much associated to the intent of that branch. The intent of that branch is a JIRA ticket. Um, if that helps make it a little bit more sense and clarify things, or at least how most designers are using it. Um, but if you have any other feedback on that, Michael, feel free to reach out and I would be more than happy to talk to the product team about it. Anthony Hall asks, for shared out collections, is there a plan to allow download the assets, i.e. the icons and other items in the file? Anything that's in the collection that we share out that's been made exportable, we can go ahead and access through inspect. Um, whether or not it's the artboard or the assets or the symbols or individual layers or stuff like that. So we can go ahead and do that as well. Um, when we share out collections, inspect is always accessible through those unless we disable it on a public share link. All right, catching my breath. Um, really good questions, everybody. I'm gonna dive back into the deck really quick. We're gonna talk about review requests, how to involve the people who collaborate on those, um, as well as um, maybe a little bit more on the SDK, I think, uh, and assets and inspect. So let's get back into this here. Go back over to master present my collection. Cool. So any active branch that we create, we can submit for a review. This is pretty much just like, it's a pull request for design, um, which is really cool <laughs> and valuable and awesome to be able to do. Um, if we have viewers or contributors, anybody else that's in our abstract organization with us, we can add them as reviewers to the, uh, to the branch that we're working on. Um, to do so, we can either request a review in the top right of our branch with that big green button um, or go directly through the status label and say in review and then we add a couple people anybody we want doesn't matter what seat they're on doesn't matter what role they have or whether it's paid or free we can add them as reviewers and they can go ahead and review or approve changes be made to the branch um, for reviews, uh, one question that Michael just brought up that's pretty common, can reviews pull requests be locked down until X, Y viewers approve? Right now they can't, but that is gonna be an enterprise feature we roll out where merge pens based on review approval for a specific project. And we can kind of decide what projects we want to apply that setting to. Um, so we can use reviews as Really today, it's a best practice. Like it's pretty transparent when something goes into master and nothing got approved or reviewed. Especially if we look back, you know, in a branch in the archive or something like that. And let's say, let's go to our commits on master, which are really just merges to master. Um, Tim merged in five days ago, some layer constraints redo branch. I can still go to this branch and I can see that nobody approved it. Um, if I'm curious about what it was. If I go back to 
this asset settings enhancement branch that Sarah had made. And I go to her branch here. I can see that it was a part of a ticket. It looks like nobody had approved or reviewed this either. But um, essentially, we have the work in context and we can see that. Um, so right now, it's generally best practice to submit your branch for review, just like Jordan or Payam in these situations. Um, have them approved by a PM. These are a couple other designers, Tim and Sarah. And then we can actually review and approve that work here. So really, it's more of a best practice right now and something that a lot of people will use either to notify folks um, that something needs to be taken a look at or to actually use it as a bit of an agenda for our critique sessions. So on the home view here of abstract, we're brought to projects by default, but there's also these other three tabs, activity, reviews, and people. Under reviews, we can see all the reviews that are assigned to me. I'm not assigned on the new right now, or we can see all reviews within the organization. Um, if I filter this by Mac app, for example, I'm just gonna see the branches that are up for review in the Mac app. From a high level overview, this is phenomenal. I can see what every single designer in this project is working on, what tickets they're working on, and what the status of those are, what's getting close to being approved, what's getting close to merging, who's reviewing that work, what the context and the feedback is. Like this level of visibility is just crazy. Um, so, um, definitely take advantage of this reviews tab. If I'm an engineer or a developer working out of abstract or collaborating with folks in abstract, reviews in the assigned to me tab is a really nice way for me to just have a high level list of like, what projects am I working on with the design team that they've added me as a reviewer on? What do I need to pay attention to? What, you know, uh, have I been notified about when I've been added as a reviewer, for example? Um, what do I need to check in on? So having that feature, even when it doesn't lock down merges to master, still be super impactful and powerful. Um, but good question uh, as well, Michael. So review requests, let's just go ahead and maybe we'll create a branch in the webinars and presentations project here. I'll say like, um, what do we wanna do? Let's say, I'm gonna update some copy on the reviews deck here. So I create a branch. I am just gonna make some changes, open up my file in sketch. Um, if I need to, Abstract is gonna automatically upgrade that file format for me. It's sorry, it's on the wrong window. Cool, cool. Um, let's go ahead and just make some visual changes here. Whenever as a designer, I make some changes, I save them and whenever I need to commit them at all, um, I can just go ahead and use that little plugin here, commit directly from abstract. So, whoops. Made a small layout change, whatever. Um, if I need to at mention people, this is also a really good way to let engineers and developers know changes that you made in the file is just by sending them a notification and saying, uh, let's say, let's say I'm on a version that's too far ahead and I broke at mentions by Michael, for example, or something like that. Michael will get a notification. My changes are back in abstract. The point of this is that I can now request a review of my branch and add other folks to be reviewers and approvers. Um, or I guess just reviewers is the correct phrasing there. So maybe I'll add Andrea, maybe I'll add Sean, um, and add them as request to review. Um, Andrea and Sean get a notification. They can now manage this review in that tab earlier, and they can go ahead and approve or request changes to the branch. Um, if I don't provide them, you know, any sort of context, they're not gonna have any context. So maybe I create a collection out of that reviews tab that I had changed, it's marked as changed. So yeah, I changed the layout here. 
back to my collection. We now have, or back to my branch and now have a collection. And let's say I need a link to a share ticket, research, whatever. Basically, I just wanna provide some context in the summary. If your designers aren't doing that, it's a great thing to take advantage of uh, and will help us understand the changes on this branch for Sean and Andrea when they get in here. Um, so yeah, really quick to request a review. They can approve it. I get notified. I'll get a notification. They can do that on the web. Um, if I pull up the web app, we can see that my branch in the marketing project, marketing section, webinars here, is in review. Sean and Andre are reviewing it. I can manage those reviewers, add more people, can be anybody that's part of the org. So. Definitely something to take advantage of, user review requests. Um, really easy to just involve the people that we collaborate with. If we're not taking advantage of it already, I would definitely you know, encourage us to do so. Good form, it's just good form. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about um, inspect. Toss a file into abstracts, it's a free trial. We can go ahead and inspect anything that's in that file the second it's added. Um, we don't need to push PNGs around as designers, and if we need to share something out, we can directly link to it. On the right-hand side, again, all of the properties that are part of that layer, they appear in the order of most frequently used to least frequently used. So this SF UI text regular in these sizes, that's what I'm using most commonly on the screen. If this is only showing up when we're selecting the entirety of the artboard, if that makes sense. So if I'm looking at the entire artboard here, the two typefaces I'm using are Vesper Poster and GT America Regular at 93 and 38. Um, if I select a specific image or a select a specific text string, um, I'm obviously only using one typeface for this text box here, and it's gonna give me all the properties of it. But when I'm looking at the entire artboard, there is like this aggregation of colors that are being used as well as type that is being used, most commonly to least commonly used. So just a little bit of clarity around that. Um, and this property panel provides a lot. It can provide um, text strings that are quick to copy, basic styling, good for CSS or React Native or something, um, textiles. If we are using any sort of style, for me, it's small detail. That's what's maintained um, in our system as well when we distribute our typography through our libraries. Um, the properties of that, as well as you know, more granular properties. If I need to change my inspect options, uh, maybe I need points, or maybe I need a different color format that's in Swift or something like that. When I go ahead and select something and uh, do click to copy, um, it's gonna go ahead and give me that. So I can go ahead and change my unit preferences. I can also highlight uh, changed values as well. So if I go back to that branch where we changed a specific layer here, and I go to inspect. If you remember, I moved this. Um, on the left-hand side, I have a blue delta. That lets me know that something has changed. If it's a green plus, it's been added. So this object here, this screenshot, has been moved. It was at an X value of 910 points. Let's go back to pixels. Um, so 910 pixels, it's now at 918. It was at 302, it's now at 366. Changes in inspect are highlighted in blue. Left-hand side is gonna let us know specifically what layer. Uh, Right-hand side is gonna highlight the values that have changed specifically. If something is removed, on the right-hand side, it'll have a red strike through on it. Um, if it's been added or it's a new value, uh, it'll have to be green. So really nice to be able to see specifically what has been updated since that previous commit. Um, being able to diff those changes and quickly visualize and understand what they are. Um, if we're looking at something maybe a little bit more complicated, let's see what we've got going on here. I'm just going to go into Sarah's branch because it's a little bit less Easter egg spoilery than some other stuff. So, I'm looking at this artboard here. It looks like Sarah's just updated the Chrome since the previous commit. She added a new header um, from one of our component libraries. Uh, she also swapped out the wallpaper for a different one. Um, 
killed that fill pattern, added the new one. If I look at different layer, you know, I can understand that she did the same thing across these artboards. Uh, it was likely an update to that style, so nothing too crazy to pay attention to between this commit and the previous one. When I find something more interesting, like the content has changed uh, or a specific card has changed here, and we're actually going deeper and deeper to understand specifically that the color we were using for this has changed um, and the content of this icon has changed this really deeply, deeply in there. Uh, it's pretty cool to be able to explore the designs to that degree of fidelity. All right, so assets. Um, anybody that is affecting change to a sketch file and abstract. Let's see if I still have that file open. I just make my assets um, exportable within Sketch and commit them to abstract. So if I need to make sure that all of these artboards are, you know, at 1x here, um, Sketch is going to go ahead and do that for me. I save my changes. Whenever I commit these changes to abstract, um, that is going to tell abstract to start generating those previews and distributing through the Mac and the web app. Um, cool. Let's say made exportable on 19 different artboards. If it's an important commit, sometimes what I do is just like add a quick emoji to it to distinguish it in the branch title or the branch commit history. So I've got a branch here. I've created a commit. Abstract is generating those assets right now. Um, and Sweet, now any of these artboards that I go to, when that's done generating in the inspect panel, right now it's generating those, but I'll be able to download them at the parameter set. We're not gonna take the file and automatically generate every single preview and export parameter. That would be a ton of work locally and a drain on your machine. So when you tell us to create a generate preview, we're gonna go ahead and do that, make it available in the Mac and the web app. All right, so that's most of what I wanted to cover aside from just like a quick plug for our SDK. Um, you can go to sdk.goabstract.com and check out some really cool things. Just to plug a couple other things that people have been, .com slash, pretty sure that's me. Sweet. Um, Here's some cool things that people are building. Uh, the team at Wix is starting to build uh, some stuff using our API where we use a you know, personal token and pretty much pull up a very wake-ish feed of work that's being done in abstract. Uh, would be really cool to present on top of a TV, but it's pretty much a UX feed built through our API. And Definitely seeing some people build some really cool stuff, either notification applications or you know, automatically packaging changes to master and exporting them, um, things like that. So check out the SDK, play around with it if you need to build some sort of automation or you just wanna do something cool. Um, we're trying to open up our product as much as possible to everybody. So tons of documentation here. Um, it's currently in beta. So if you do have any feedback or things that you wanna see, uh, definitely hit us up. We have a team working on this and um, we can do a lot of cool things in terms of pushing uh, and pulling information in and out of abstract. So that's the last thing I kind of wanted to plug here. And I'll go ahead and dive into questions. Um, we've got a couple minutes left. I'm gonna knock out as many as we can. And I'll also, again, share out a link to this collection through a public share link. Oh, I'll turn on inspect for everybody as well, if you really want to. Um, so we'll copy a link to that. If anybody needs to access it, boom, there's the link. It's the same link as it was before when I shared it earlier. I've updated the collection, I've changed things, I've added new artboards, I've removed others, um, but the link stays the same. Really nice. Um, so let's take a look at questions. We've got five open ones in the Q&A section and some stuff in the chat. Oh, all panelists and attendees, my bad. My uh, Zoom chat thing was not under the correct thing. Cool, sorry about that everybody. I was only sharing it to myself apparently. Thank you Zoom, uh, sorry about that. Thanks for letting me know um, by the way Ashish, really appreciate it. Cool. 
So questions, um, just to back things up a little bit, uh, Jira integration, probably, possibly working on it, likely through the scope of collections, uh, being able to assign a collection to a specific ticket. And even what we can do now with public share links is embed a layer into Jira and allow people to access it without needing to log in and inspect and download assets directly from there. And that link can always reflect the latest work from master or a branch. Really cool. So possibly some closer integrations there in the future as we further develop things. Uh, locking merges to review requests. Um, yeah, so something for enterprises. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but being able to lock down merging pending review request approval. Um, somebody also asked, how did the Jira ticket link work? Uh, it works the same way as any other link that we add in here. Um, since we can use Markdown, there's a couple shortcuts. Uh, if we have a link and I say, you know, bracket link, uh, and then I drop that link in there, whoops, and I don't have a choice, that's a link. And it goes directly to the embed URL. I can do that for a geo ticket, I can do that for whatever I want. Um, but there's some tool tips right there. Take advantage of them, use Markdown, toss some nice links into your branches, make them more valuable for our developers and engineers, the folks that collaborate with us. Good question, Michael. Um, when you merge a branch to master, the collections come with it. They do not, but we have project level collections like I called out earlier, all collections regardless of branch status. Cool. Um, Sharing, I'm just going through the chat here now. Sharing links to clients for review, that one made it into the Q&A and we covered that question. Examples not using abstract files, so there isn't the inception effect. There, oh, it's too confusing to look at because we're demoing abstract through abstract. Um, yeah, we're actually working on a couple demo environments to curb the inception effect. Um, if we're looking at a product here that's not abstract, it's the same thing, it's just a different mock. Um, but yeah, I hope we'll be able to use uh, more of these in the future and on future webinars. But we are doing some things to build out wonderful demo environments. Shout out to, uh, to Morgan Keyes, who is one of our fantastic brand designers working on that project with us. Um, thanks for surfacing that, Sharon. All right, Randall asks, any way we can use abstract to manage share copy with developers? Yeah, if we have any copy on any artboard, um, and we go into, let's see if I can find something that's a little bit copy rich. Like, let's say I have uh, a new modal for I hit the limit. Any of the text in here is just quick to copy on the right hand side. So if I need to share copy, I can just grab a link, send this mock to them, and any of the content that they need out of it, we can grab. Um, hopefully that checks off what you're looking for. It sounds like it might, but let me know if it doesn't. Possible to clone a branch in abstract? It is not possible to clone a branch. Branches are unique in abstract. A little bit of a difference there uh, between like traditional Git, we don't clone branches, we don't edit master directly, things like that. We try to make it as simple as possible for designers to take advantage of. Um, all right, back over to the Q&A, six open questions. I've got, uh, let's say like seven minutes left. Um, but before I jump into these things, I know we're getting close to time and I just really wanna say thanks to everybody for joining. Um, it's been really good hanging out with y'all and you're asking great questions. Um, Michael asks, are there plans to allow merging from child branches to other child branches before merging to master like the following? Um, branches, sorry, just to share with everybody else so we can see the question. Um, that's the question. Oh no, I accidentally sent that as a direct message to Randall for no reason. Uh, sorry, there we go. The Zoom chat thing is really throwing me off right now. Plans on merging from child branches to other child branches. Um, yeah, so if we master dev feature branch one, branch two, uh, I th think what we're asking is whether or not we can take a child branch and merge it into another child branch. 
which is the appropriate flow. When we have parent and child branch relationships, read and unread states is gonna merge into discovery, which is then gonna merge into activity stream improvements, which is gonna merge into master. So it's literally like we're going up the stairs. Uh, changes go down the stairs, merges go up from the bottom up. Uh, hopefully that helps clarify, but I don't think I'm totally understanding things the right way. Do you speak with Sketch about their intentions of the 20 mil on benchmark? It's affect your awesome product in some point. Um, I think I know what you're asking, Pablo. What is Sketch doing? What are they changing? How does it overlap with Abstract? Um, Sketch is always going to be Sketch. And just like any other drawing tool, they're going to vertically integrate and pack in as many features as they can. Uh, how well those features play with other formats and whether every single designer on your team uses just Sketch um, is another question. So we're going to continue to be a central hub for versioning visual files. Uh, there's going to be overlap. There is with Zeppelin. There is with Envision. There's probably going to be basic overlap around um, comments, possibly, in Sketch. Um, however, we do a lot of things very powerfully and uniquely uh, and have a very good working relationship with that team. So our approach is to allow you to create projects and add files into those projects regardless of whatever the format is. So if somebody wants to use Sketch for something they can, if they want to use another tool for something they can, they can, they can do it, version it, manage it, collaborate on it in exactly the same place uh, with a high degree of transparency. So um, good question. Appreciate you surfacing it. Um, do you ever encounter merge conflicts? If so, how do you resolve them? Kind of a question for another webinar. Um, Brian says, one of the most powerful aspects of Abstract is the flexibility to use it how your org wants to. Our entire design team is using Abstract, but those of us who really love Abstract get constant questions about best practices when it comes to branching, merging, naming, et cetera. We found an article from the Microsoft Outlook team helpful, but I wondered if Abstract itself would ever share how they name, how they merge, and what best practices your internal teams use. We actually do pretty heavily with enterprise teams, but um, we have some docs that we're actually pushing out there more recently. Um, also, in the other webinars that I run, um, I go pretty in depth, especially on the one on one around best practices. Um, as far as naming, I think artboards are a little too subjective for us to give some guidelines on. But for branches, uh, best practices around merging, commits, that one on one session goes in pretty deeply to it. And we can also see that on demi.com slash go abstract. And that is a link to everybody, not just one person. Um, yeah, solid brand. We're definitely trying to surface more and more of those things, especially through uh, sessions like this. Okay, last in. Michael says, why is it my artboards and collections slightly burned, not as crisp as the original design? Yeah, so the way that we render previews in abstract are at 1x today. So if we are creating something at 1x and we're presenting it in abstract, it's at the dimensions that we created at. Um, we don't render 2x previews uh, today, but we are working on that. But we are changing a lot of things around where preview generation occurs, the resources it consumes on your local machine, and what we can provide um, from the web pretty much in our servers. So hopefully be able to do some 2x previews in the future, but that might be why it could be slightly less crisp uh, than something when you're navigating around the canvas directly within Sketch and you're going in super far to all this stuff. Um, but yeah. All right, cool. Um, I think that's, that's everything, yeah. I'm gonna end the Zoom call here. I'm going to grab the recording and put it up on Vimeo and YouTube, and we'll share it out in an email. And I'm going to go to New York for the next two weeks and hang out with some folks out there. So if you're in New York and you want to meet up with some design advocates and account managers from Abstract, let us know. We'll be out there. Um, again, really thanks to everybody for joining. We wouldn't be able to do these without you. And uh, appreciate all the support and some really thoughtful questions. Um, but yeah, have a good one. Thanks for joining and I'll see you on the next webinar. Just to plug it really quickly on the website, 
we just launched a brand new webinar uh, page that is under resources. And you can sign up for future webinars uh, here and see the recorded ones as well. So it's just abstract.com slash webinars if you want to send things out to your team, etc. All right, I'm on 10% battery. My computer's gonna die and I'm gonna head out now. But thanks again to everybody for joining. Really appreciate it. Um, and see you on another one of these or in person at an event or something like that soon. All right. See ya.